Well, thank you, Allison, for that generous introduction, but more importantly, for your incredible leadership in this very important movement. Um, I think any of you who know Allison know her to be an activist and an agitator and somebody who um, is focused on making sure that um, we don't just talk about problems, but we actually try to solve them. Um, I'm pleased to be part of this gathering, even for a short time. I want to thank the dean and Michael Moore and the Bloomberg School of Public Health. I think the fact that you are going to hear and have heard from uh, two governors, a mayor, White House, and governmental officials, um, various private sector activists, certainly the Goldman Sachs um, participation is hugely significant. And I would be remiss if I didn't also just give a shout out to George Sheldon, who leads our agency for children and families, uh, but also is one of the best advocates on behalf of children uh, in this country. Um, the issue of child trafficking is one that um, really touches all of us, whether we want to admit it or not. Um, I think it's an issue that as a parent uh, gets right to your heart right away. When any of us hear about children being exploited or abused and certainly enslaved, I think you first think about what, what you would feel like if that was your child. Uh, what would happen to you if, if your child had to endure that kind of lifetime of cruelty? And I think that feeling is what we need to capture and propel the action that we take here today. It tells us everything we need to know about our responsibility for preventing these tragedies. These are our children. When he addressed the Clinton Global Initiative last September, the president made it clear that this administration is committed to being a leader in this work. Uh, you heard from the effervescent Todd Park earlier today, um, but Todd is a, certainly a leader in the administration in making sure that what we do is based on evidence and that we hold ourselves accountable and measure um, where we go. And today I'd like to focus on some of the changes we're making at the program level uh, around services that will help us make additional progress in keeping our children safe. So for decades, researchers and advocacy groups have been calling attention to this issue. But by the time President Obama took office, child trafficking was still a relatively new priority at the federal government level. The legislation signed by President Clinton and reauthorized under President Bush had spawned efforts in different agencies that sought to strengthen the work already being done by outside groups. But frankly, there was no coordination. The Justice Department looked at enforcement. Homeland Security handled some of the international components. Our department looked at victim services. But the result was that we weren't being nearly as effective as we could be. We weren't taking advantage of strategic partnerships either within or outside government. We weren't identifying gaps or overlaps in our efforts, and we weren't ensuring that shared work was being driven by the best and newest evidence. So we are committed to changing that approach. We started by ensuring that child trafficking was a priority issue across all agencies of federal government. We've stepped up our collaborative efforts and will host regular meetings to strengthen the coordination between federal agencies. We've also increased the coordination with those of you working outside of the federal government to help drive attention to the crisis on a local level. Last month, we received recommendations from the President's Advisory Council on Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, which is a really diverse panel of religious and nonprofit leaders who shared with us their best ideas on how the federal government can more effectively partner with faith and community groups to combat human trafficking. But that's just the start, making sure we're leveraging our own assets. 
We're also providing in-person training to help empower the nearly 1,000 frontline responders. In addition to webinars, workshops, videos, newsletters, and more than 700,000 public awareness pamphlets distributed by our Office of Refugee Resettlement. So when you add improvements in direct case management and our, to our national hotline, we've been able to begin to identify more victims than ever before. In fact, our hotline fielded more than 20,000 calls in fiscal year 2012 alone, a 74% increase over 2010. We take that as, frankly, a good sign, a sign that more victims of human trafficking and community members in this country are able and willing to reach out for help. We've also recognized, as Allison said, that when survivors do reach out for help, we need to do a better job not only connecting them with services they need, but making sure they aren't victimized all over again. And that's why we've continued to support a multidisciplinary approach through grants that help ramp up local capacity to respond to human trafficking in cities from New York to Honolulu. These programs enhance victim identification and service referrals through training and technical assistance, increase awareness about trafficking locally, and work with partners in the community to ensure a victim-centered response. And I can tell you we're working with teachers and counselors, with folks who run shelters for homeless youth and others, so they begin to ask the right questions and help identify who these victims are. The investments have allowed us to make sure that local service providers are not just guided by the latest evidence when it comes to responding to human trafficking, but they also understand that reclaiming the dignity of victims can be just as important as health care or housing. One of the cruelest aspects of child trafficking is that it erodes a child's sense of their own humanity. When young people are treated as less than human by the adults around them at an age where those cues matter so much, they often can't help but take the message to heart. Through public awareness efforts and trainings, we're helping to ensure that survivors hear a very different message about their fundamental value as human beings. So what all these steps mean is that child victims are less likely to fall through the cracks. To ensure that we'll continue to close the gaps, we're developing a federal strategic action plan to take these efforts to a new level, a process co-led by our department and the Departments of Justice and Homeland Security. Now, many of you may know this already, but for those of you who don't, the plan is open for public comment until the 24th of May, and we'd love to hear your input. We've put together an innovative online platform designed to enhance public engagement and maximize transparency. And I'd like all of you to think about weighing in, visiting the website on the Administration for Children and Families at HHS, and make your voices heard. We're committed to making sure that this is a collaborative strategy, and it won't happen unless we have your expertise and your comments. And one area where we want to focus in particular is on improving health outcomes for survivors. When we finalize the plan later this year, we're confident that it will mark an historic step to make sure our approach to combating child trafficking moves forward. It will bo bolster coordination and collaboration between federal, state, local, and private partners. And the plan will help pave the way for us to dramatically expand access to services for victims by putting resources toward inventions that we know work. We want to place a new emphasis on the short and long-term health and safety of survivors. And the plan helps to promote heightened awareness of the trafficking crisis to the general public and leaders at every level of government. More importantly, It'll provide a detailed list of concrete, actionable steps to make sure our actions translate into real progress and, frankly, to hold ourselves accountable. And all of these steps, we want to be supported by the best evidence and the research available. 
And that's why I think the gathering today is so important. For the first time, people are sharing information about how these strategies really can work. So when it comes to a cause as urgent as ending the exploitation of our children, and again, these are our children, we need to commit our resources where they make the biggest difference. And the action plan will help assure that we do just that. We've already identified steps that we can move forward on right now. We'll be releasing guidance to child welfare and homeless youth programs to help them enhance their ability to identify and better serve victims of child trafficking. We want to strengthen the safety net to meet the needs of survivors who have fallen through the cracks in our current protective services system. We want to seek out new partnerships with the philanthropic community to foster innovation in services like sustainable housing and comprehensive care. And we want to continue to strengthen our capacity to identify and respond to victims of child trafficking who enter our country from abroad. Right now, all unaccompanied children who immigrate to the United States alone and who are placed in our Office of Refugee Resettlement Shelters are screened for trafficking. Last year, 13,600 children were screened, and that number will be even greater this year. When we identify trafficking victims through screenings, we're able to reach out to them right away with critical services to help them rebuild their lives, and that definitely includes health and mental health services. The stronger our capacity is to quickly identify victims, the closer we can come to ensuring that every child is treated empowered and put back on a path to a healthy life. We live in an age where there are not many issues that are black and white, but I would say this is one where there's no gray area, where the incomprehensible evil of child trafficking has to be brought to a halt. And as the president has said, caring for our children is our first job. It's how as a society we'll be judged we cannot and we must not let these children down. In the months and years ahead, we want to remain committed to building on the work we've accomplished so far. We want to build even closer partnerships inside and outside the federal government. We're going to reach even more local providers with support that's culturally sensitive and backed up by the best evidence. And we pledge to do even more to promote dignity for all survivors. We want to end the nightmare of child trafficking for thousands of children and give them the safety and care and opportunities that every child deserves. We know we have a long way to go, but we're moving forward with a renewed commitment and a common vision. So hopefully, we'll keep up the fight. We want to keep fighting with you to bring child trafficking out of the shadows to make a difference for all those children around the world who desperately need our support. And again, we would welcome your comments on the plan by May 24th. Thank you all so much for being part of this amazing conference, and I'm pleased to turn things over to a great advocate and terrific businesswoman and philanthropist, Tori Birch. Tori.